Now in this segment, Andrew and I turn back the clock to a pair of key anniversaries and also just really amazing stories that I think we as a society need to remember and also um, share with those who don't remember, not just younger generation, but also folks who don't put in context maybe just how significant these events were. And first up, Tiananmen Square. Believe it or not, 25 years ago to the day, that's when the Chinese military put down the month-long protest for freedom. And again, that was 1989. Now, we still don't know how many people, in fact, were killed or wounded or imprisoned as a result. And we also don't know the name of the man whose actions became the iconic image of the event. And Andrew, I, I would argue uh, in the last 25 years, I, I can count on one hand, maybe, more iconic images that stand out from that. We remember where we were when you saw it, and you're like, oh my God, that could be the most courageous thing I've seen a person do. But you, you really have to put this in context, Rich, because the Soviet Union was still in power in Russia. Yep. We had never seen a protest like this in a communist nation that had ended without tragedy and violence. This one did too, but just the simple action was something we had never seen. We know now that the Chinese government put in orders for the military to put down the protests in Tiananmen Square. Some units of the military ignored those orders, others resisted, also unheard of in China. And here's the video of the guy we know as Tank Man. Tank, a, a line of tanks approaches. This is a guy who came back from the supermarket. He's got bags in his hand. He waves off the tanks, and then when the tanks try to maneuver around him, he jumps in front of them again and keeps standing in front of them, trying to stop them from advancing to the group of protesters behind him. And there are shots being fired in the distance as other Chinese troops are firing on the crowd in Tiananmen Square. He then climbs the tank to talk inside to the soldiers and try to appeal to the better angels of their nature, getting them to stop their advance and not fire on their fellow citizens. How scared would you be if you're this guy and then a soldier pops his head out of the tank and he engages him in conversation? Then when the tanks begin to take off again, he continues doing it and jumps around from, again, we don't know this guy's name. Reports are murky because the Chinese government will not let this video or any mention of Tiananmen Square be mentioned in China, even on the internet, because Google or any company that does business there has to scrub this for anybody who's searching for it. A lot of Chinese uh, citizens don't know that this happened. But the idea people can't imagine about the totalitarian regime that it was. Right. You, well, you criticize, could argue. You it, criticize but, the government. Right. And you get thrown in jail and for life. this guy, you know, and we don't even know the name no. of Tank Man. I mean, oversaturated news, we still know the man. We don't know if he was alive, if he's dead, whereabouts. It, one of the more amazing stories. And we all say to, we saw it play out live in Technicolor, if you will. And it was just one of those stunning things where what price freedom? It you know? was heart-stopping at the time, the amount of courage that this ordinary person showed. Who today, who, do you know anybody who would mm -hmm. stand in front of a moving tank and say, no, no, this isn't your job and appeal to the better angels of their nature. And it worked, at least for this group of tank, uh, this column of tanks. They did not advance into the square. They did not attack their own citizens. Uh, it's hard to imagine what yeah. was going through his head or his heart. And good on those soldiers, too. It's still an amazing moment. Absolutely. And speaking of amazing moments, um, we also have another anniversary, not today, but this week. In fact, this Friday. And it is going to be 70 years this Friday of D-Day the invasion of Normandy, France here, and really a turning point in World War II. The largest seaborne invasion in the history of mankind, 156,000 Allied troops crossing the English Channel and securing the beachhead, obviously at a great cost. It's an attack that marked the turning point in the Second World War. 12,000 Allied troops are estimated to have died in that struggle. And we are fast losing uh, the remainder of those who fought in D-Day and lived to tell the story. And it's not just D-Day, the whole World War II generation, the greatest generation, uh, as they've rightfully been called here, are losing. Uh, we're losing so many of them so quickly. Most of the survivors are in their 90s, including Michael Vernillo. He's a Pennsylvania D-Day vet himself, who this week will be made an honorary member of the French Legion of Honor for his efforts. Who isn't afraid? You know, I didn't think I'd come out alive because the men were dead. They were had a movement with bulldozers so we could land. We couldn't land because the water was too high. They couldn't open. They couldn't open those doors. So they heaved, the the LST swerved a little bit, 
and we went down on ropes. And some of them, I know, drowned. And some of them, and it was a little wee boat there to take us to shore. But I know it was up to water here. And his story, like so many, uh, this here, uh, Joe Pisano, a man that I got to know very well. 15 years ago, uh, RNN went uh, to those beaches of Omaha and Utah Beach right there in Normandy. Uh, Ed Gorman, another one. We took six veterans back from our region um, who were all there that day and those days of uh, the invasion of D-Day. And uh, over the years, uh, we got very close with them. Um, and they're a big part of uh, not just my life, but a lot of people here. And they were then and still are to this day regular Americans, young men who became American heroes, and uh, they have amazing stories to tell. So we will honor uh, those who served in D-Day as we revisit our special report on that mission. RFL traveled, as I said, with those vets as a return to Normandy, and uh, we're going to hear those stories. In fact, here's just one of them. One thing that you were told when you first come in or suggested to you, when you come into service, don't make close friends. Because if you lose them, it'll get to you. And it's true. But, uh, it's hard to describe how many people you, you don't even know that belong to your same outfit that uh, lay there motionless. And you got to think of what you're there for and go at it. That man, uh, like most of those men, are no longer with us. They've passed in the last 15 years, but their story's indelible. Uh, that walk in that cemetery, one I'll never forget. And we're going to be bringing you that special report, D-Day, lest we forget. It will air this Friday at 6 p.m. right here on RFL. And I, um, I believe it's a piece of history that uh, you're not going to want to miss. Again, this coming Friday at 6 p.m. Um, that is going to um, be it for you and I tonight. We still got the legal panel coming up. Uh, Andrew, thank you as always very much. When we come back here, a lot of legal questions from the past week, both on the policy, the political, but in the end, legal questions as well. Of course, I'm talking about even this week here, Sergeant Bo Bergdahl saying that at least those closest to him, that he, in fact, was kidnapped after he deserted his post and is to be blamed for some of not only his own capture, but also those who risked their lives and some who lost to trying to rescue them. We're going to talk to our panel if he could actually face channels, uh, ch actually legal charges as well, and we'll have a bunch of other issues, large and small, straight ahead.